I want to talk about my method to measure reaction time, which is quite innovative. So what I did is I used a machine vision camera. And machine vision cameras are widely used in factory settings to, to monitor high, uh, high speed uh, processes like, like um, uh, assembly lines. And they, they tend to be very high fidelity cameras. They're built to industrial standards, and be high precision. Uh, uh, and and they're, they're not consumer grade cameras. So they can actually run you know, for, for, for many hours. They have high, high um, data transmission rates. So you just plug them into your computer and these things will record all day long. So um, the frame rate of the camera that I have is, is about 800 frames per second, it's about 815 frames per second. And so it's able to capture about 1.2 milliseconds. So one frame translates into 1.2 milliseconds of elapsed time. So the reason this is actually a very, um, a much more, a much superior way to measure reaction time than a conventional uh, mechanical system where you're actuating a lever, then a electrical signal goes into some kind of processing device, say a computer uh, or a circuit board, and then it it, it produces a, or it it shuts off the timer, right? And um, that method is uh, actually fraught with a lot of uh, lag. Uh, you can call it latency. Uh, and 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 so these these methods um, produce they skew the number upwards, and so that's actually why we're seeing a slowing reaction time. It's because these these methods that we use today are actually skewing the number upwards. They're adding lag. They're adding latency. Whereas you go back to Galton's device, it's meant that's a um, uh, what, what you call a pendulum chronometer. And what a pendulum chron chronometer is, is is effectively it, it it measures displacement. It doesn't actually measure time. So it actually measures distance travel. It doesn't measure time, so you don't have all of that uh, that lag that's built into, uh, you know, activating a timer, activating all of these, uh, waiting for a signal to be transmitted, waiting for a lever to be depressed. That's not how his his chronometer worked. It, it was purely measuring distance move, uh, distance traveled, and he could then using certain tables, he could then convert that to, he could then use his tables and convert that to to time. His system, Galton's system, was able to. So Galton's device is able to record an average reaction time of about 183 milliseconds. Modern data sets point to about 250 milliseconds. And so I was quite uh, intrigued by this finding of slowing reaction time. And a lot of people claim that it was due to slowing, uh, essentially it was mental slowing uh, that would be related to declining intelligence. And so I figured uh, one way to... Um, put this issue to rest would be to see just how much latency is truly in, in, in found in these in these modern uh, uh, instruments. The proponents of the slowing theory argue that these these modern instruments are quite accurate and they're they're just as accurate as Galton's device. Critics of the slowing theory argue that the modern instruments are fraught with latency, as I've found. Uh, and so um, I want to go over how uh, how I did this. So if you bring up the uh, this is my frame rate analyzer, and this is a program called Virtual Job and free program, it's an open source program that uh, essentially you can shuffle through all of your frames. And what you're gonna find is that it takes uh, uh, 10 frames and, and clusters it into one frame. So you really only have uh, a, a, an increment of, of, of about 30 frames per second. So it, so it reduces it by a factor of 10. Uh, so you don't wanna use Adobe Premiere Pro or any other kind of editing program. So you won't be able to do a frame by frame. Um, in this case, what we are doing is uh, is we we are we are setting our starting point as uh, the 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 time when, of course, the stimuli uh, starts appearing on the screen. And since the stimuli is actually quite small, we don't really have uh, much interpretation uh, subjectivity as far as deciding when we decide to start our point, uh, our, our baseline time zero, because it doesn't take very long for the stimuli to appear, right? It's like, here you can see there's no stimuli. Here you can see the first frame, right? It's very shaded. It's very, it's, it's only, um, it's, it's, it's opacity is, is still very, very low. It's increasing in opacity until it is fully, fully present. So we, we, we're pretty conservative and we're saying when it's kind of 50% opacity, we set that as, as point zero. And then we just scroll down here, you can see until we start seeing the finger movement. And what's so ingenious about this method is that, uh, you know, it, it, it's completely free of signal transmission. 
uh, the actuation of any kind of mechanical uh, or, or digital or analog or, or circuit board or any of these 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 uh, machines, right? Which which take time to carry out instructions. We are free from any of that lag, and we decide using a you know a skilled analyst. You don't really need to be that skilled. You, you just need to be able to 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 have good eyesight and see. Okay, you you can see right now my finger's starting to be depressed. I can then set that as my endpoint. And I don't remember what the number was starting. So we're 242 milliseconds right now. So we're going to put that into our calculator. Then we're going to scroll back to the point we recall. Uh, we recall that uh, the point where the stimuli was at about 50% opacity. So now we're 85. So uh, 157, so minus 85, 157 milliseconds. It took me to react to this little red button or this little red uh, dot that was produced by an LED monitor. And the time it takes for me to start pushing this little metal lever. Now, this metal lever is um, <laughs> it's actually, I don't really want to tell you what it's from. It's a, it's a, um, it's a nail clipper. Um, and, and the reason I use nail clippers, I, I 3D printed a, a, a device. But the problem with my 3D printed device is that it, uh, it, it effectively, um, it, it, I couldn't get a, a strong enough spring because I, I just was lazy. And so it uh, it was too easy to depress. So I wanted something very hard to depress. This is actually quite hard to depress. Um, and and so it, it really doesn't make much difference what you use, just so you, you have something that the finger is. You can see here from a start point, there's no movement in the finger, right? The finger's steady. There's no movement. And and he, he, and, and the minute you you your your nerve signals have been received. So the muscle receives the nerve signal. It then begins to contract and starts pushing that actuator down. Now, um, this um, this stimuli source is is from a program called Inquisit Six. Now, Inquisit Six is then used as a control. So the control is assumed to be what the you know the professionals out there use to measure reaction time or where these this putative slowing comes from, right? With these modern samples like Ian Deary or whatever, right? Who measure reaction time today. And so that's that's the that's the control. So if we if we actually um bring this back up, I, I counted, I, I made about three three um three recordings, three uh consecutive recordings of about um all right, so that's fifty seven thousand frames. So times three milliseconds divided by a thousand. So that's about 171 seconds, uh, about 2.8 2 minutes. So about three, so about 10 minutes. And, um, and and each time, I don't know how many times this actually went through. Yeah, it was about, uh, it, it was, it was about uh, 80 times. So I measured myself 80 times and I got a running average of 160 milliseconds. That's my running average. Pretty close to, to what Galton got, actually faster than Galton. And I don't have, reason to believe that I am actually faster than a Victorian. I think Victorians were probably been pretty close to, to my speed. My speed isn't really what matters. I'm just a, a test taker. I've had other people do it. I, I've had some some um, some family members take the test. And um, what I'm measuring effectively is the difference. The difference between this mechanism that I've developed, uh, the, the high-speed camera measurement system versus Inquisit 6. So let's bring up Inquisit 6 now and see what we get to find out Right, that is the holy grail number, which is uh, the total latency, and then we can figure out whether or not reaction time really did slow since Victorian time, Victorian times, and we can put this issue to rest because I think it's about time we put it to rest. Right? Are we really less intelligent than the Victorians? Uh, well, we'll soon find out. So when I was going over the issue of frame clustering, the audio failed. So so virtual dub uh, essentially it it, it goes individual frames. So if you have a camera shooting 10,000 frames per second, it's going to go to each individual frame. If you were to use, say, Premiere Pro or a common editing program, what I find is that it clusters it into 10, 10, 10 frames into one. So it takes 330 frames per second, basically turns it into 33 frames per second. So uh, you, you'd get, uh, you know, rather than 150 milliseconds, right, you'd get, it would, it would show uh, 15 milliseconds, right? Uh, so you don't want to use a conventional editing program like, you know, typical uh, editing program, you need to use a frame analyzer. So just that's just an important point to make. So let's bring up the let us bring up the um, the uh, Inquisit 6 database. And 
we are going to search for search for that right where is that open tab not looking on disk all right so in a short moment we will then bring up and here we go my paper on ssrn which is an open source um essentially an open source e-journal download that open and this is my little paper this is a visualization a 3d visualization of what this uh how this operation works so here you can see these industrial machine vision cameras uh here you can see the monitor obviously and this is a lever this is actually the original 3d printed lever i made uh where i was designing but realized that it i could just use a simpler uh simpler metal level uh i could just use a simpler more ubiquitous metal lever and it really didn't make any difference okay so this is a setup pretty basic and here uh here are our, th our stats uh and here's our um statistics um as you can see for the photographic method using the yes I, that's what I, I i forgot to mention using the human benchmark stimuli because uh as james cattell had discovered uh, late uh, 19th century that a, a more intense stimuli will speed up reaction time so if i use human benchmark which is basically the entire led monitor lit up green i can get about 150 milliseconds with 320 tries again a standard deviation of 16 here's here are all the individual numbers okay and and then using human benchmark with the computer using the mouse right without the photographic uh method what you get is 235 and using inquisite six you get 240 and 14 counts uh but 14 counts was 14 uh and each i think each one is about uh is about 30 so so in reality we did um and so about 14 counts uh but in, but in reality each each count was actually an individual try which i think is, uh at least 15 tries so it, it's really more like 14 times 15, so it's more like actually 200 individual tries. So very, uh, very representative data set, 240 milliseconds. So now we can take 240 milliseconds and we can subtract the 160 number. And just so you, um, just so you can see the actual stat, uh, I want to find it here. The actual stat is uh 40 count 158 that's not it right here okay that is the final number 80 tries and um and so 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 about uh 160 milliseconds we can then subtract so then it's it's definitely not uh if the count uh if, if, if i mentioned the count is 14 but that's each iteration each iteration i think is uh Inquisite six test is like it's less than that. It's not it's not fifteen each. So if eighty divided by fifteen, it's uh, it's it's five point seven. I, I could have sworn it was more than that, but anyway, uh, the running average that I got using the computer was two hundred forty milliseconds, and and I and I did it okay enough times to get a running average. Okay, because look at look at the standard deviation how small it is, right? So there's not much variation. Okay, so take two forty. Obviously, that's eighty milliseconds. Okay um so 80 milliseconds is the difference between true reaction time or absolute reaction time and you pseudo reaction time if you will right this is this is um computer tests are pseudo reaction time they are essentially meaningless uh numbers that have no applicability to these kind of diachronic analyses where you try to compare uh, numbers over time because you are uh, you, you do not have measurement invariance. There is no uh, standardization in, in, in reaction time uh, instruments. Uh, so you have to be, you have to interpret these results 
uh, a bit more astutely. And in this case, what this number would indicate is that reaction time, if a person that gets 240 regularly, which is, which is me, uh, that would indicate that the average of about 250, I'm a little bit faster than average, right? I think the average is about 250, assuming most other machines have the same amount of latency than me, which is, which is actually a pretty conservative assumption because my computer has about 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is probably in the top 5% of computers. I mean, not gaming computers, right? Like most computers that academics are using don't have a, that much RAM. Uh, I don't know what the average is. Maybe it's, it's, it's 16 gigabytes. Uh, they probably have uh, older operating systems. A lot of these DRE studies are from like 2006, I think, uh, 2005, 2006. So they're operating older versions of Windows, which are slower. Uh, they're operating older keyboards, and most importantly, they're operating older monitors. So it's possible that the latency that I'm getting uh, is is actually uh, is actually uh, uh, quite a bit shorter than the than the latency that a person using uh, using a computer from you know 10 years ago is going to get. But I'm going to assume that this is a realistic estimate. You can't really get much faster than what what I have as far as a computer, right? Is a four gigahertz CPU, 64 gigabytes of memory. HP Pavilion, right? It's, it's I paid twelve hundred dollars for this computer. It's a very good computer, uh, and 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 so I don't think that that is is going to be a concern, right? So um, here's another illustration from the side. You can see these little machine vision cameras with little C mount lenses, and uh, and these machine vision cameras. If you want to pick one up, they're uh, they're called a a Contrastec Mars six six fifteen, uh, I think, and it is a eight hundred fps camera. And it uses a USB 3.0 interface, and you record the the video using a software program called Holcon, or you can also use this program called AMCap, which is a uh, which is just a USB USB interface um, for 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 webcams things like, things like that. So, uh, in conclusion, in compendium, uh, what I can say is that the paradox of, of slowing reaction time uh, has been solved. The implications. Are that uh, intelligence um, has fallen. The implications are that intelligence has fallen only um, only very slightly. It may have fallen because remember that reaction time is an imperfect measure of intelligence, only correlated with G or IQ at about 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So it's entirely conceivable that IQ could have fallen, but it's it's not necessarily sufficiently large in magnitude to be picked up by reaction time. It's the signal noise noise ratio is is uh, is essentially too low, right? You, you you don't have enough correlation between IQ and reaction time for a slight drop, maybe a few points uh, over the last uh, century and a half or so. Uh, that it, it's actually predicted by G, uh, polygenic scores. Polygenic scores for IQ have declined somewhat, uh, and so you would predict that perhaps IQ fell a few points, uh, but but nowhere near the, the the nearly one standard deviation that some. Uh, some have uh, have quite uh, controversially claimed, and so I think that the issue is is sort of put to rest. I encourage more people to replicate these findings. Um, I am not an academic. I think that often, <laughs> ironically, the, the the interesting findings come outside of academia. They come outside of the intelligence research community, uh, and they're made by by people who who are in in outside disciplines. Uh, and and so I think that concludes it. I hope people enjoyed the video.